This Dortmund team, I guess people are bound to start drawing comparisons with sort of Dortmund under Jurgen Klopp. And and actually, there, there are one or two, but we haven't really focused that much this season on the podcast on Borussia Dortmund. And now feels like the right time because the top of the Bundesliga as well. So are they challengers in, in Germany? Can we now say that with the, the lead they have in the Bundesliga? And are they challengers in Europe as well? I think, well, Europe, I think, is going to be very, very difficult. I mean, Dortmund have to play at the absolute maximum level, uh, need everyone available, and then still get lucky um, many, many times to get deep into the competition. It's not impossible. We've seen sort of outside teams do it. We see what Monaco did with very similar resources. Uh, we've seen Dortmund themselves, 2013. So not impossible, but I think the priority is the Bundesliga, where they have a realistic chance. Uh, their st- strength, their run of games, their run of uh, scoring is is frightening for the competition and Bayern showing a bit of weakness. So that those two things have to come always together to see a challenge um, in recent years. And uh, they seem to be happening again. And Lucien Favre is is a guy that has an unbelievable ability to improve teams. Even statistically, um, these teams always outperform both defensively and in attack the actual stats. So you look at the numbers and you're thinking they shouldn't be scoring so many goals and they should concede more goals. How do they do it? If it was a one-off, you'd say this is just luck or this is just a you know freak result. Stati- statistics can't always grapple individual results, but he does it at every single uh, club that he comes in. And it's amazing because you speak to the players and they say, especially the substitutes and Dortmund have a history, as we saw again yesterday, of scoring with substitutes. They have a real impact immediately. He says the substitutes go over to Lucien Favre and he tells them, he takes us little little, um, little block and dra- starts drawing and he shows them exactly where he's seen a weakness in the opposition back for, where they should run, how they should run, who they should, who should they attack, what kind of space they should move in, and it works. He's got one of those rare abilities to really understand football, I think, at a level that most coaches still don't and most pundits still don't because I don't think we can necessarily see what he sees. But it's, 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 it's an unbelievable um, combination in terms of the excitement, the energy, the dynamic that these guys bring and a nice balance uh, through the likes of Axel Witzel and uh, Thomas Delaney who are holding midfielders, who have real authority, who do a little bit dirty stuff as well. It's a great team and really, really fun to watch. Do you know who enjoyed it a lot in a kind of sadomasochistic way? Simeone. Because it was against the Spanish oh, Simeone, Simeone, after the final it. whistle, he looked totally shell-shocked. He'd never been beaten by that margin. Nope. He was scratching his head, literally. <laughs> he was just standing like, what has just happened to and us? Then, and then he started talking about himself and, and his team, but referring to Dortmund because he was saying, did you see what they did? So direct. Not, none of this useless possession. <laughs> so he's still uh, he's still uh, trying to win something out of this defeat. but uh, Inspired by Atletico, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll talk about Atletico in a minute. But before before we do that, Jadon Sancho scored again. Have we told the, the story of why he left City? Is that clear in everybody's mind? Uh, a, a contract was offered to him and agreed. A contract was agreed. And Jadon and, and his dad, who looks after him, decided, you know, as you say, we, we we may not play enough. Why don't we go somewhere else? With, where you know, and how about going abroad? And and he he wasn't scared. He said, "Football is football. Football is a you know. It doesn't matter." He's learning German, and I'm not sure he's adapting or, or trying to uh, you know live in the city and and understand the German culture. He goes from home to the training ground and vice versa. But the original reason why he he left, it wasn't so much to experience a, an a, 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 an opportunity abroad. But because he felt that, yes, as you said, he wasn't going to play, but a contract had been agreed. So it wasn't that City didn't want him or hadn't offered him enough. So it's just a, a decision that has to do with with how he per- perceives his immediate future to be. And to be honest, it's working very well for him. But on back on Atletico Madrid, just quickly, uh, as you said, the, 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 the biggest defeat they've had in the Simeone era. And... At the at the bottom of what he was saying after the uh, the defeat, this fact that you know Dortmund doesn't have any possession, it doesn't matter. Possession doesn't matter. There is an argument that's been taking place in within the club and uh, and around the club. When he played Rodri, who is of course former Villarreal uh, holding midfielder, like uh, imagine Sergi Busquets. That's what he is. The team keeps the ball. 
And we all like that. And we praise Real Atletico Madrid for those 20 minutes in which they did so well when he came on in the second half. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to say, no, this is not the Atletico Madrid that I won. So on one hand, you've got people pushing him towards, yeah, but you've got the best squad ever. You've got an amazing stadium. You should be playing better. And him saying, no, no, hold on. This is not my essence. So it's an interesting debate and let's see where that goes. I think the thing that I really like about um, Borussia Dortmund, just before we, we move on to Juventus, is that... It seems to me watching them that the attacking players that they've got have got a lot of license to express themselves. I remember being at the World Cup and talking to Gareth Southgate and Gareth Southgate saying he wants his players to take risks within the wider structure that he's set up. And that, I think, is the comparison for this Lucien Favre Borussia Dortmund team. And I think that's part of the reason why Gareth Southgate, of all the young players he could bring in, Jaden Sancho is the one he gave game time to in the last international break. You know, when you've got players like Pulisic, when you've got players like Goethe, when you've got players like Sancho and Marco Rice, that ability to express yourselves is absolutely vital. And that, I think, is is part of the reason why Sancho is, is really flourishing at Dortmund and why he will probably flourish with England as well. The Euro Leagues on the Football Daily Podcast.